So today I'll be using a floral reference to create an oil painting study. First, I'll show you how I simplify that reference into three values. And uh, then I'll go into color, uh, interpreting the reference, uh, simplifying and abstracting it into something representational of the photo, yet also imagined and designed. So let's head into the studio. Here is the reference photo I'll be using. I will zoom in a little bit, making the flowers and vase take up a little more space, um, as well as make the flowers uh, slightly larger in proportion. I personally would like that better. All right, getting started. I've got a little bit of raw umber, but not quite enough turf on it. As you can see, it's, um, there we go. I'll get a little more turf on there. And at this point, all I'm doing is getting the canvas covered in the raw umber. Um, you don't want it to be too wet or drippy. Um, otherwise, when you wipe it down, it'll wipe right off. Or when you go to paint over it, it'll mix into the colors you're painting. So I've got enough turf into the raw umber mix that um, it's going on fairly dry. And as I wipe it down here, um, it'll bring it right down to the middle value that I'm hoping for. By having this middle value that's a neutral tone, you know, all my lights and darks and colors will show up well on top of it. I usually like to start with uh, my light values. Um, they're really easy to wipe off with a little bit of turp on a clean brush. I can just go ahead and draw the shapes of light that I want and take a clean paper towel and the wet areas wipe right down to clean canvas really easily. Creating a three value study the way that I'm doing it here is an alternative way to start as compared to drawing, which is what a lot of artists do. I prefer this method because it is not as object oriented and gives me a foundation for creating form and uh, unity throughout the objects. Creating a three value study as opposed to uh, a sketch you know, it keeps your mind engaged in a more abstract way. Um, at least that's been my experience. In the background, I've changed the shape of the white of the wall to um, have more of an angle as it comes against the cloth that I think is more dynamic. The edge of the table on the cloth and the edge of the cloth that's vertical are uh, leading the eye down through the flowers. And I want the spacing of my masses to be asymmetric. As you can see here, we'll start to see the objects and flowers emerge from the values um, rather than being clearly delineated ahead of time. And this way I'm thinking about the shapes of light and dark uh, and middle value as opposed to the shapes of the objects. Um, if I paint the shapes of the lights and the shadows accurately, the objects will be uh, drawn accurately. However, uh, many times I'm not trying to draw the objects accurately. I'm trying to draw them artistically and interpret what I'm seeing into something that is crafted as far as the shapes go and the placement of those shapes. The way I'm placing the centers that which are dark of these flowers is inspired by the placements of the flowers in the reference photo, however, um, has more to do with, or as much to do with um, the spacing that I think looks good. As you can see here, this three value design is a fairly simple one with the middle value sort of um, filling in the spaces between the lights and darks. You've got two light masses, one very large light mass that has uh, complications as it uh, gets into the flower details. And then you have one simple small light mass uh, that's showing the translucence of the vase. There's less of the dark value 
and overall it creates a more complicated shape with the shadows and uh, the stems and the shadows of the vase on the cloth and it intertwines with the other values to create um, interest. The dark creates more of a patterned energy than the other values do. So this is where I would stop with the three values study, uh, letting this design be the bone structure for um, my color work. The underpainting really doesn't have to go into detail that you might choose to go into further along into the painting process, but it's there to guide you about those value relationships and keep you grounded in the design concept. I have a few more colors out on my palette than I'm going to use, uh, just left over from, from painting earlier. So the colors I'm planning to use are my limited palette of cadmium red, cadmium lemon yellow, phthalo green, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson, and white, of course. To get started with color, I'm just gonna mix up a few colors that I think I'll use and first bring them down to a value that's useful. Some artists I know are afraid to use phthalo green because of its strong pigment and choose to use viridian green instead, which is basically phthalo that's already toned down with white. Um, I prefer to have the full range of the color. So in this case, I need just a little bit of it to mix the light green that I'm putting into the light of the wall. The green I'm mixing with phthalo and the lemon yellow is similar to a color I have on my palette, which is a cadmium green. However, I'm mixing it from scratch, just using a small amount of phthalo and the yellow. I'm bringing it to an even lighter value with white uh, so that I can tangle it with uh, pinks and create a somewhat colorful representation of the white wall that's behind the still life. The pinks and greens will tie that wall into the pink flowers and green vase that I'll paint later, um, but in a subtle way that still reads as light. Colors can be creatively interpreted and many times you can work more colors in than you might think and still give the general impression of the local color. For instance, uh, in this blue cloth, I'm working a lot of pink in that is playful and sort of tones the blue down from a distance. As I'm mixing my colors, the first aspect that I wanna think about is value and that I'm achieving the value relationships that I want in my painting. You can see that I mix large piles of paint so that I have plenty to come back to and don't have to mix the same colors over and over again. Also, I mix the colors in slightly different variations across the palette so that I get variety in my color work. I want all of my colors and surfaces to be in transition. On the lit side of these flowers, I'm mixing up a warm pink with a cadmium red light and the lemon yellow. When I get it to the hue I want, which is how red versus how yellow, uh, then I'm also bringing it to the value I want with white and not too much white so that I keep my saturation. So it's a balancing act between correct hue, a correct level of saturation, as well as value. On the shadow side of these flowers, I'm transitioning between a warmer red mixed with cadmium and a cooler red made with lizard crimson that are both at the same value. The warmth gives a feeling that light is bouncing around inside of the flower or coming through the flower slightly. Here, I'm sort of painting within the lines, but I should note that in a more finished work, there would be a tension to soft and hard edges. I would make more adjustments to my original 
three value design. But in this case, I'm staying rather true to the design to show a step-by-step -step transformation. In the green glass, where the glass is most translucent and letting light through, the color of the glass is being influenced by the warmth of the light. And so the green is a part of the light value and influenced by yellow. In the deeper shadow areas of the glass, I'm able to be playful with color and transition through purples and warm tones where the local color is less important. It's only in the middle value between the highlights and the deep shadows that we're seeing the true value and our mind is quickly and subconsciously drawing conclusions about the color of the glass. It's in this area that we're communicating the true color. And I think this is a good place to stop and take a look at the finished study. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and I'm looking forward to seeing you in class.